Hey the Mom Met friends, ending here for another episode of the epic story. When we last left off, we were getting ready to, of course, talk with Cordain. And so that's what we're doing right back in Nona's cave, so let's talk. I do not know if Leaflock will help us, despite his anger. It is good to see you again, Staff Deng, even though we were literally just right next to each other. I spoke with Leaflock for a time after you left, and it is difficult to say if he will help us or not. He remained angry. But some of his initial fury had subsided. He cares little for the plight of men or elves. But of trees and horns, he cares a great deal. If Nerzum was simply a giant, Leaflock would not trouble himself at all to help us. If Nerzum is, as he appears to be, an unnatural fusion of a giant and horn, there is a great deal. There is at least a chance that Leaflock will involve himself. I do not know how great a chance that may be, but we have done what we could. Now, completing this quest will unlock an optional interlude from Glewine's map. We have planted the seed of Norzum's defeat. Now we need to let it bloom. What did we miss while we were searching for Leaflock, Staffdeng? Are our friends and uh, the survivors of Brightor still doing all right? I don't know. We should probably find out, and it looks like we need to go talk with Glewine, who's actually back here. So let's talk, Glewine. Did you find what you wanted in Balewood? You tell Glowine about Leaflock, and he smiles happily. That is great news! If such creatures are as strong as Cordain believes them to be, we may have the best ally against Nerzum we could hope to have. Nona's survivors are improving as well. Leafwig, Ledwig, is much stronger than he was. And everyone's spirits are improving. It will not be long before Ledwig can get up and go about. <laughs> Horn has spent a great deal of time speaking with Nona. I have been trying to give them their privacy. I mean, PDA, am I right? But I can tell that they have not yet worked through their feelings. Ah, the complexities of youth. I remember them. <laughs> Dimly. Okay, crazy glow one. Alright, time for the sixth interlude, I believe, because I'm pretty sure we already did Kalanglad's appeal. Your eye is drawn west across the map, beyond the borders of Rohan, and comes to rest upon the rocky hills of Dunland. You wonder what has become of Goladir. And the Grey Company, since you left them. I'm pretty sure they all start out that way, don't they? Beyond the Borders of Rohan, coming on Rocky Dunland. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Meanwhile in Dunland, Goladir is unfinished, has unfinished business to attend to with Lou Brennan, the master of the Falcon Clan. Ellipses. Okay. Well, here is hoping that we can actually take out Lou Brennan. I don't think that's going to happen, though. But we hope. This is a showdown we have been waiting for. For like five instances. And by instances, I mean session plays. All right, here we go. Maybe. Game. Meanwhile, in Talmuth Address, Were you the sitting thirst down? for vengeance drives Goladir of the Dunedain to seek out Lou Brennan, the treacherous leader of the Falcon Clan. All right, we will find Lou Brennan. I'm hoping it's this way. Return to the entrance of the prison caves. I completely do not remember where those are. But thank you, game, for not telling me. That's great. Really, I do appreciate that. 110%. All right, well, it's clearly not this way. That is for sure. We entered into a red wall. What does this even do? Plus 50% melee damage. 
Goldie's daughter felt the Kate's of Doom. A spoiler alert for stuff that you've already seen if you're watching this series all the way through. Okay. Ah, here's the gate. You can wait no longer. Lou Brennan must pay. Let's turn off world chat so that we can actually read these things. I wish it would retroactively change it too to where we couldn't see the previous messages. Blah blah blah, yada yada. Um hmm. Well, it seems like that you'll just have to rewind the video and read it, because it's not in there. I thought you might have come here sooner or later, Goladir. I know what you want to do, and I am here to help you from doing... I am here to help keep you from doing something you rash. Cornier shrugs his shoulders and looks up at you with a stern expression on his face. Lou Brennan has so many at his command. It would be foolish for you to return to the caves in search of him. We should do as Halberad wishes and leave the leader of the Falcon Clan be. He wronged us, but we can no longer do anything about that now. You will not change my mind, Goladir. I will not let you do this by yourself. I know you are angry, my friend. But returning to the prison caves by yourself is simply throwing away your life. I am angry too, Goladir. Lou Brennan cost us much, and I have not forgotten his treachery. Many good men lost their lives when he sided with the wizard. Friends of us both. And if the leader of the Falcon Clan had his way, none of us would have survived. Gornir sighs. All right, but I am coming with you. Really? It's that easy to talk a ranger? Well, it probably is that easy to talk a ranger into doing something, to be honest. Rangers are easy about those things. Someone is just ahead, Goladir. A woman, from the sound of it. And she may be in trouble. She is the first living creature we have seen in... All these caves today. We should be cautious. Carefully, Goladir. She may not be a friend. Who is there? You have to believe me, Ranger. I spoke against Lou Brennan's decision. And many good folk did the same. Your people were betrayed by Lou Brennan. But so were many of my own. He believed the wizard's lies, and thought to raise the Falcon Clan to the heights undreamed of. But in doing so, he gave the Falcon Clan a death blow. A symbol of my clan is now little better than that of an orc. Melona spits. But there is no time. Lubrenin taken has taken those loyal to him and crossed over the mountains. If you are seeking to have vengeance upon him, you are too late. He will be in the land of the horse lords by now. I told you Lou Brennan did not speak for all of us. Before he left for the land of the horse lords, he cast those disloyal to him into the pits. I only escaped by feigning death. You have to come help the others. It is a big drop, Goladir. Are you certain about this? How can you tell from back there? For all you know, there could be a nice little low. That is a big drop. Okay, drop into the pit. Let's do that. Here we go. A terrible smell of rot fills the pit. Look, Goladir, the girl is still alive. Are you here to help us? I hurt, hurt my leg in the fall. The girl winces with pain, and you are stricken suddenly by the memory of Lorn Lorninial lying before the gates of Karndum. 
my name. Winda, you have to. Winda falls silent, exhausted by the effort. But her darting eyes flicker to the tunnel leaving the chamber, and you can see for the fear in them. This is where Lou Brennan throws the captives. One of them, his beast. The shaking in the earth. Goladir, da, 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 giant thing. The shake in the earth, Goladir. This is the beast responsible. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Let's kill it with fire. But since we're out of fire, we'll just have to kill it normally. The Beast in the Pit. Cleverly titled, Turbine. Okay. And see, here we are again, having way too little damage and way too much morale. I'm fine with like some classes being built more like this, like the Guardian, for example. But when you're used to a ton of DPS and you're playing a new character, you really just want to be awesome as a ranger. The rangers should be more amazing than we are. And sadly, they're not. We did it. Age has not slowed you down at all, Golodia. I am lucky you were here to... Take the brunt of the creature's attacks. Do not laugh at me for this, friend. But I feel some remorse for slaying such a mighty creature. I know it sought to devour us, but I cannot help think it was a captive here as well. Lou Brennan, ke Lou Brennan kept it in this pit. And he made use of its appetite. Mayhap we did it here, courtesy by freeing it of its confines. If you will confront, comfort Winda, and ease her fright, I will call up to Malone, Melona. She will find us a rope, and we can climb out of this pit. You try to ease Winda's fears with comforting words, but it has been a long time since such words came easy to you, and your face reddens, reddens with each stumbling syllable. You're a kind ranger. Thank you. Winda tests her leg and winces gingerly. My arms are, are fine. But, but I will need some help with, with the rope. While Cornier and Malona arrange for getting everyone out of the pit, you listen as Winda haltingly tells you how she learned the craft of the tree climbing when she was young. My father will be shamed in the world of spirits if I fall from the rope. And I will blame you, Ranger. You swear that she will not fall, and that her father will be proud of her ascent. But if she does fall, she should make sure to fall on Cornier, who is relatively plump for a ranger. She laughs at that, and you laugh with her. Is something funny? For the first time in a long time, your vengeance is forgotten. So that was kind of crazy. Goladir seems to be cured for a bit. So if I remember right, there is still one more session play that will be coming as just kind of a conclusion to wrap up things as what is going on with the rangers and it shouldn't be too far away if I remember right I'm pretty sure it is in the very near future so anyway that is that let's see if we can find horn uh, nanigans is here all right Since Leodwig has improved, I thought we might all take our meal together. Cordain has already told me about Leaflock. I thought he was going to hurt himself, smiling so widely. 
As for me, I... I'm doing fine as well, Staff Teng. Nona and I have been catching up while you were gone. I told her about our adventures in the Sutkoffs and Fangorn, and about our unfortunate audience with Theoden King. She told me about her attempts to provide those in her care, by raiding abandoned villages and stealing supplies wherever she could find them. It sounds very difficult. I wish we had been here with her. We could have helped her, and, well, you understand, Staff Deng? Since Laodwig has improved, I thought we might all take our meal together in this chamber. Let me know when you are ready to eat. Ready to eat? Okay, Hobbit, yeah, sure, let's go eat. Korodan says they have planted the seed of Nurizum's defeat, and we need only wait for it to bloom. Is he right? Can we trust this Ent? We walked slowly forward, unsure of what awaited us. Horn crept before us, sword at the ready. And suddenly a shrew burst forth the bush, toppling Horn on his face. Yes, yes, it's a funny story. Master Glearwine, surely you have something else we can speak about? <laughs> oh, I do, I do. Have some words concerning Brytor. Would that be too painful for our friends? I, I would like to hear it. I too want to hear of my city. That is your answer, Bard. Well, I suppose it is. Now it's time for the most painful a city song on in the, the game. Hill, she was strong, beer tor, fair beer tor. From far across the plains, her banners so we painful. espied. And Even she I was think a it's painful. In time of pain, time of want. But the winter came, and with it, an iron tide. Keep in mind, he taught horn. And it was our day to comfort. Our time to protect. From each corner of the land all would ride. To that city on the hill, strong beer tor, fair beer tor. To me, it sounds like it should be to the tune of that one Avatar song. And if it was, if somebody could actually make a video that's musically talented, put that song to the tune of the Avatar song with General Iroh, I think that would be just amazing. I think that would be one of the best things ever. What is that sound? An enemy? A rumble from without. And yeah, I know I changed that voice. I don't know. I get tired of making the stereotypical highfalutin elf voice. Staff thing, what do you think makes that sound? Is it Nerism? Has he... has he found the cave at last? We must see what has happened outside. Alright, here we go. Ah, yeah. Tis the march of the trees. Up oh, here we go. There we go. Sir Robin, how romantic. Alright. Leaflock has done as we hoped he would, Staff Tang. He has sent horns to seek Nerzum. Will they prevail against him? I cannot say. But I know this. My heart is stirred by the march. They seem so different from you or I. And from Horn or Nona, so far removed from the daily worries of men or elves. But still they march forth. They've marched for us against the evil Nerzim. Against the evil of Saruman. Even now, Leaflock and his herd have not retreated as far from Middle-earth as to abandon its people. It is worth remembering... It seems our friends have remembered something as well, Staff Tang. I told you it would happen, did I not? I am certain I did. 
That's not creepy. We should go back inside and bring what people we can out here to see the sights, Stafteng. Who can say which, when such a marvel will be seen again? All right here we go. Boom, <laughs> boom, Go forth, young one. Yes. Your foe was once like you, Boom, but no longer. Cannot the strongest tree grow from the smallest bone? Always thought our tattoos were awesome. Though you be defeated, you will leave your mark upon there your you foe. One of the few and long cinematics. will remember you. It's fitting for an end. One of the few long cinematics. So... I don't know what we're led to believe there, if we're just led to believe that Nerzim killed those, all the trees, like, because if that's the case, there's a whole other story there that is absolutely terrifying that there would be just, like, most of the forest destroyed. I mean, think how long that will take to repair. It's kind of unfathomable, fathomable, that that would be the case. I have never seen anything like it. Things are more clear to me now. The sight of those trees marching away to fight an Erzum. So Luke would fall down upon his face in wonder. And Wadu would never be have believed me if I told him of it. But looking at those marching trees, allies of ours in this land, and yet so different from us, I realized... What a strange world this is, and how small our place is in it. Cordain spoke of Leaflock, the tree man. He knows not of Rohan, Hiram, or Dunlinding. To him we are nothing. And yet he sends his, his children, if that they be, to fight our enemy. Such wonders, both marvelous and terrible, all at once. I do not want to face this strange world alone. I will no longer run from the differences between my people and Horn's people. He and I will be uh, one. When those in my care are restored to health, I will go where he goes. Let all who oppose us beware, for together we will be strong. Thank you for keeping him safe while I was away, Stafting. Soon we will adventure again. Nerzum will soon be defeated, and we will leave this place. Until then, we should rest and recover our strength. We will speak again when that happens. Note that completing this quest will unlock an optional interlude from Glywine's map. Alright, I guess it just goes to chapter 15. That is the end our of the Wildermore Epic Story. So for those that don't know, and spoiler alert for the Wildermore side quests, and you know you can also watch my Wildermore series if you want, but if you don't, there's a spoiler alert for Wildermore. Either play through it or whatever. If you don't want to do either of those, here's a spoiler alert for it. Basically, in Wildermore, what happens is that there's this Thrym Redbeard guy, which I think we might have met in the epic story, but very briefly. And essentially, he's the super duper hero. He ends up not being dead. He comes back. We all go and fight Nerzim. Nerzim is defeated in this major instance of awesomeness that doesn't involve the trees at all. So I don't know why the trees get involved. It really didn't make that much of a difference, I don't think, if I remember the side quests. It's kind of completely unrelated. Although I wonder if in the epic story we're led to believe that that weakened Nerzim or did something that would make him not as strong, maybe. So I don't know what the case is there, but we do still have one more interlude quest which will be done next episode but till then thank you everyone so much for watching another episode of the epic story when we return we'll do just that but till then thank you all so much thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit the like button below and if you'd like to see more of my daily content feel free to subscribe and you'll be notified when that new content comes out and also if you'd like to help support my channel and help me continue to create high quality videos feel free to support me on Patreon. 
and you can get all sorts of great rewards in the process. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon for another video.